So we'll start off by talking about the PureScale Nano Cluster, which has been produced by IBM as a demonstration platform. Uh, then we'll move on to a brief overview of the Technology Explorer, which we're using as part of the Nano Cluster delivery to show what workloads are going on, what the status of various components of the cluster are. And then we'll talk about scalability in terms of dynamic licensing and why that may be important for your business. And move on finally to a live demonstration of how dynamic licensing and the flexibility that that brings may be useful to your business in dealing with your uh, spikes and peaks on demand. We're going to be using the IBM PureScale Nano Cluster. This is a small demonstration footprint, not production ready, used to demonstrate the technology in use in PureScale. In this particular configuration, we have two combined member and CF nodes, one shared disk service on a third equivalent node. Each node is based on a dual core 1 gigahertz Atom processor, similar to what you find in the netbook. Uh, they each have 4 gigabytes of RAM, and on the member and CF nodes, a single 40 gigabyte solid state drive, and on the shared disk and application server tier, a 100 gigabyte 7200 RPM SATA drive. The architecture is important uh, in that. One of the limitations of this platform is there's no InfiniBand interconnect between the CX and the members. Uh, this is a, a little bit of a restriction in terms of the performance of the overall solution. The Technology Explorer is included as part of the PureScale Nano Cluster solution and is provided as a means of monitoring the environment. As we'll see, it shows the status of the CFs, uh, as well as the transaction rate running through the cluster. Um, if you're interested in the Technology Explorer, and it is a source of considerable interest, as it's very extensible, uh, please have a look at the link supplied on this page. So, in this foil, we're going to briefly touch on the uh, one of the value propositions for DB2 PureScale, which is the daily licensing or dynamic licensing view um, for the software costs. In the, uh, in the chart presented, in a traditional environment, customers would look to provide capacity to deal with their biggest spikes in terms of workloads in the environment. And that would mean uh, a spend in terms of hardware and, soft, more importantly, software licensing across the whole year at the 100% band uh, right at the top of the chart to deal with, in this example, a November spike. What PureScale Dynamic Licensing allows you to do is to license, if you like, down to a daily level, the exact amount of capacity that you want to make available. And this means that uh, across the course of the year, in this example, you might choose to uh, license at the 70% level uh, to cover your regular workloads. And then for November only, um, dial your capacity up, your license capacity up to 100%. Uh, and in that respect, um, as you can see from the red stripes in the graph, there is considerable saving to be made in terms of software licensing costs. We're going to look at an example situation where we have issues with capacity throughput on our existing cluster environment. In this example, we have one member running in the cluster with the second member waiting in standby to introduce additional capacity as required. As you'll see, we're currently running at about 3,000 transactions a second through the cluster. So in our pretend environment, we've introduced more workload through, let's say, a web server, and we're starting to see queuing in the application tier. So what's causing the problem? We'll have a look on node 102, where we're currently running the database services, and see what the state of the um, processor is to see how we're doing in terms of capacity. We're going to use the db2pd minus osinfo command for that. So we'll fire that off from node 103. And we can see down here at the bottom 
the, the total CPU use for that node in the cluster is 100%. So as we're starved on CPU in node 102, let's imagine that we've added additional capacity um, in terms of licensing to support our additional requirements on the platform and we'll introduce another member. Give you to start member one, which is waiting in standby at the moment. It's a little while to kick off. Uh, in part, this is down to our platform, which is uh, restricted in terms of its connectivity between the various nodes. We're not using InfiniBand. This isn't a true production environment. The nano cluster demonstration platform uh, utilizes straight TCP IP, albeit one gigabit. So give it a second and the member will start up. We we'll go back and see how our throughput's getting on. And we'll see it's climbed up after the restart of member one up to 5,000 transactions a second. So we'll just go and have a look now and see what impact that's had on our CPU utilisation in Node 102, and we'll look and see what's going on with Node 103 as well. So, how are we getting on in terms of CPU delivery in Node 102, first of all, which was the service that was running on its own, flat out at 100% CPU in use? We'll use again DB2PD minus OS info to have a look at the environment, and we can see that the CPU level of utilisation is down now to around 42 in use. And we'll do the same thing, db2 pd minus os info on node 103, which is the new member we've introduced to provide additional capacity, 35.5%, all very nice. We'll finish off by having a look at how well this new capacity is being delivered in terms of balancing workload, again with the db2 pd command, this time with the server list option which shows the information returned to the members by, uh, to the member clients by uh, the members. And it's showing the relative priorities of the two members in the cluster as 50 and 49. So very nice workload balancing. 